Christ is the center. And as we all get closer to Christ, we have to get closer to each other. Hello, this is Curtis Hall with Sabbath School Coaching. Uh, for those of you who know me, you know I have a real passion for Sabbath School, and I've been blessed to have a ministry that allows me to work with different churches and conferences on how to improve the overall quality of Sabbath School. Uh, this year, I have been um, fortunate to be asked to do the Sabbath School lesson for camp meeting at the South Atlantic Conference camp meeting that's going to take place in a little less than a week. I wanted to use this uh, opportunity as a teachable moment to share some of the um, uh, preparation uh, things that I will go through leading up to Sabbath School and also the presentation of the Sabbath School lesson. I want to share the insight uh, with you uh, so you will see the steps that I took to get ready for Sabbath School uh, as far as my materials, um, the theme that I worked around, uh, the questions that I developed, uh, how I plan to start the class, how I plan to end the class. Uh, I want to share with you the insights on uh, how all that took place and my plan is as of today is to have the Sabbath School uh, discussion videotaped uh, this coming Sabbath so then uh, we can go back and look at uh, how I implemented the very things that I share with you. Uh, I don't think that Sabbath School, a good Sabbath School just happens by chance. It takes preparation and if you've attended any of my workshops, any of my Hit the Mark Sabbath School workshops, or if you've read my Hit the Mark uh, Sabbath School training book for teachers, you will see that I emphasize that for every 10 minutes of lesson study time, a good teacher should invest at least one hour, uh, which means that if I'm fortunate enough to have 30 or 40 minutes this coming Sabbath uh, for camp meeting Sabbath School, uh, I want to assure you that I will have invested uh, over four hours in preparing for that 40-minute uh, time period. Uh, so I will share with you um, my material. Uh, I'll share with you what I have developed. I'll share with you perhaps uh, some of the uh, things that I must weigh. Uh, do I want to go in this direction with this discussion or do I want to go in this direction? all with the uh, intention that I know that at the end of Sabbath School, people must leave there both inspired and encouraged. It must be an experience. It, it can't just be a history lesson. And though this quarter we are talking about uh, uh, major lessons from minor prophets, uh, it's more than a history lesson. We have to see how these things that we're talking about from week to week apply to, to us, not just uh, the, when it took place, not just to the church members, but how it applies to you and I in our everyday living. Uh, so uh, hopefully I will share information that will uh, give you insight on how uh, to make that come alive. Now I'll let you know that uh, I am going to use a lot of techniques uh, that uh, I had discovered from the greatest teacher that there ever was, which is Jesus Christ. And a major portion of his teaching was done by using questions. A good Sabbath school teacher will learn how to use questions to stimulate a discussion, okay? Uh, and I will emphasize between now and also throughout the lesson portion time that our job as teachers is not to give information. Our job is to guide a Bible-based group discussion to a safe conclusion. And getting to a safe uh, conclusion means that I will uh, have to no doubt deal with hijackers on Sabbath. Now there are hijackers that um, have an agenda, but I want to give everyone the benefit of the doubt. There are some hijackers that mean no harm. They just talk too much. They're too, too lengthy in their answers or in their comments. And though there's nothing um, sinister about what they're doing, 
if you do not control that behavior, it will not only eat up your time, but it will, uh, uh, it will divert you from where you're trying to go with your lesson. So uh, I anticipate that's a normal thing. It's nothing to be a, a shocked about. But I want to show you as we go back and look at the videotape from the class of how I handled objections. And one of the best ways to deal with hijackers is for you to have a clear path forward. Okay, where they must have to keep up with where you are going uh, and it's a little less um, likely that you'll be hijacked that way. I also share in um, my workshops that a teacher really only needs four good questions to go into Sabbath school with. If you have four really good questions, uh, you'll be surprised at the amount of interaction that you could generate from that. Uh, so I will share those questions with you. I will share the outline um, and uh, hopefully that you will appreciate this and feel free to share it. I encourage you to share this video link with, uh, with as many people as possible. And my goal is that uh, we will have uh, more and more better equipped teachers uh, in our churches uh, from week to week. Uh, the only way that we are going to turn around the decline in Sabbath school attendance is that we must do two things. Our programs must be better. They must be uh, worth the time that people would take to come out. The second thing is that our classes must, must be better. We must have better teachers or, or a better skill set for our teachers and you could generally tell that uh, you have landed in a good class if there's a good Bible-based discussion. Uh, so I want to encourage teachers to move away from feeling that our job is to give information. My job is to tell you this and to tell you that. Let's let the Bible come alive and let's, let's examine the Bible. And this week I'm going to share with you how to do that by God's grace. So I just pray that you just stay with me for the ride. I pray this is something that will bless many people. And I'll uh, talk to you on a video uh, excerpt uh, shortly. God bless.